Hey everyone, welcome back to Bagel TCG. Today I'm coming at you from the dark, but I'm really excited about this video today. I know it's not about a new Dusk Till Dawn hero like my previous one with Bolton, but honestly, I'm not really comfortable with my Prism, Vincent, or uh, Levia deck yet. I think Levia or Levia is the strongest of those three. Um, she's quite good, but I don't think a list has been refined enough for me to show off. And I don't think Vincent or Prism are very strong. At least I haven't found a strong version. And I really don't want to show you all a weak deck or a deck that I don't think is very optimized. So the three new other heroes are going to have to wait a little bit until they get a new video. Um, but I do want to show off my second favorite hero, Briar. You all know my favorite heroes are Bravo by a lot and then Briar. Um, I really enjoy Briar. I think she has a super fun play style. And she's also surprisingly very, very, very strong on a budget. And you know I love building budget decks. So I'm going to show off three decks today. This first one is the fully upgraded Briar. You can see it's almost $1,000. The second one is this budget Briar deck. It's only about $100. I see $90 right here. And then the last one is this ultra budget Briar that's only $30. And I think this deck is strong enough to win armories. So you can get started on a huge budget playing a really fun aggro deck and uh, not spend too much money. And then you have obviously a lot of upgrading to do if you want to get to the full version, but I only think there's maybe a 10% difference in power level between that $30 version and this $930 version. But let's start on the fully upgraded version and just look at what Briar's game plan is and what she's doing. So Briar is an aggro deck. She's a uh, elemental runeblade hero. So she's mixing um, some attack actions with some non-attack actions and then combining those to deal physical and arcane damage. So a lot of hybridness going on with rune blades, but they are generally pretty aggressive. Um, our equipment suite is based around the rune blade weapon Rosetta Thorn. It's her signature weapon. It's very, very strong for one resource. It deals two physical damage. And if you've played an attack and non-attack action this turn, it deals two arcane. So one resource for four damage split two and two is very, very powerful. Um, and it's the weapon that basically all of the rune blades use right now. The goal of the deck is to activate Rosetta Thorn every turn and attack with it if you can. Um, and her equipment suite is also pretty strong and gives us a lot of blocking value now. So we've got kind of Providence to block two on our headpiece and filter if we need it. Uh, we've got the new chest piece from Dusk Till Dawn, Diadic Carapace. This is very strong. It's going to block for three total. And it also provides Arcane Barrier two if we ever need that. Grasp of the Arc Knight, the signature Rune Blade Arms, also blocks for three and then can uh, convert two resources into one arcane damage through the Rune Chance. Um, that's pretty strong as well and lets us use extra resources if we get too many blues. And then the classic Snapdragon Scalers when we need it a little extra go again, um, especially if we need to turn on that Rosetta Thorn or if we just haven't found a way to do that. Um, we are going to get go again pretty easily through our Embodiment of Lightning token, which happens after we've played our second non-attack action each turn. So we're trying to play two non-attacks every turn at least, and then usually one attack that's going to get go again from that Embodiment of Lightning, and then we're going to attack with our Rosetta Thorn. Um, we also block a little better, so if a, an attack action hits, the first time we create an Embodiment of Earth, which lets our non-attacks block for one extra. Um, but that is really the goal of the deck, and it's also built around this uh, card that's very, very powerful called Channel Mount Heroic. It's a three-cost non-attack action with Go Again, um, so pretty expensive, but it gives all of your attack actions plus three power. Um, so turns all of your zero for four attacks that we're playing into zero for sevens, which is just incredibly, incredibly strong. Um, and the reason we want to play cheap attacks is because cheap attacks means you can get play more attacks on your Channel Mount Heroic turn. Uh, it also lasts for multiple turns. It lasts on the turn you play it. And then if you've pitched a blue, or sorry, if you pitched an Earth card that turn, it'll last for another turn. And if you pitch two Earth cards on that next turn, it'll even last for a third turn, which is not that uncommon to see happen. So you can usually get you know three full uh, turns of Channel Mount Heroic in, which is very, very strong. Um, the rest of the deck is kind of based around those few key cards, namely, uh, the ability of Briar getting that Embodiment of Lightning for Go Again, Rosetta Thorn for that powerful one resource for four damage, and then Channel Mount Heroic uh, to get a bunch of extra buff. If, I mean, if you play five attacks while this card's been out, it did 15 damage on its own. Um, that's a little bit on the higher end, but even if you can play uh, three attacks, this was 
three resources, so two cards basically for nine damage, which is still pretty good. So you're trying to just get at least three attacks in, and then it's pretty good. Um, it's above rate after after you play three attacks, and then every attack after that is just super broken. Four, plus 12 damage, plus 15 damage, and so on. Um, you can see, looking at our blues here, because it does cost three resources and we want to have a, a Earth card pitched for it, we are playing quite a lot of Earth cards. We're playing uh, 15 Earth Blues. So we've got the new Anthem of Spring from Dusk Till Dawn, plus Autumn's Touch, So Tomorrow, Tome of Harvest, and these blue Earth Lore Surges. So 15 Earth Blues. Um, it's pretty good. You want to have it so that you're always going to have an Earth Blue um, when you draw this Channel Mount Heroic, or at least the turn after. So if you need to arsenal that Channel Mount Heroic and then pitch the Earth Blue the turn after, you at least don't want to go too long without finding one of those Earth Blues. Um, we do have these a few other Blues. We've got Force of Nature, which is our best card to play while Channel Mount Heroic is out. Uh, it makes it so whenever an attack action hits, if its power is greater than its base, you draw a card. So if you play this while Channel Mount Heroic is out, all of your attacks draw when you when you hit with them. So you can just chain them over and over. Super, super powerful. And uh, otherwise, it's a blue three block non-attack. So quite good. And we've got two Captain's Call. This is a really flexible um, blue. You get most Almost all of our attacks are zero cost. So this is uh, plus two power on them or go again, or it can pitch for three resources. So it's good all around. Um, the rest of our deck is all some powerful red cards just trying to deal the most damage, plus this Gorganian Tome. It doesn't pitch for anything, it doesn't block, it doesn't do much other than cost zero, you play it and it draws a card. Um, it just replaces itself and it's a non-attack, which means it is a free way to get halfway to your Embodiment of Lightning. Um, you're trying to always play at least 27 attacks uh, in Briar, so you can see we're at 27 attacks here. That just means you'll have enough to hopefully find an attack every turn. Um, we are playing these Enlightened Strikes right here, that's a zero cost, we're playing Flex. This is a zero for four damage, which is what we want on all of our attacks, but also, since we are playing a good amount of blues, if you ever draw one and you need to use those extra resources, you can turn them into plus two damage on here. Lightning Surge, a great zero for four with Go Again from Arsenal. Ravenous Rabble, hopefully a zero for four with Go Again if you reveal a red off the top. Scar for a Scar, a zero for four if you have less life. Snatch, probably our best attack, a 0 for 4 with an on hit of drawing a card. Swarming Gloom Veil, usually a 0 for 4 go again in our deck. And uh, those are all our strong red attacks. Um, we do have Mischievous Meeps as a new one from Dusk Till Dawn. Uh, this, this card's a little weird, but I think it's quite strong. Um, it's uh, only 2 power for 1 resource, which is obviously a lot worse. Usually you want at least 5 power for 1 resource, so quite a bit lower but you get all that extra benefit in the text box. So it has natural go again, which is already quite strong. And then it has basically the snatch on hit. Um, it says when this hits a hero, gain control of an item, they control with cost two or less. Most of the time your opponent isn't gonna have an item. Um, against dash, this is quite good, and maybe Kano, but most opponents don't have items in play. It's more importantly where it says otherwise draw a card. So if it hits that your opponent and they didn't, or hits a hero and they didn't have an item, you get a draw card. Um, so it's a one for two, go again, on hit, draw a card. Pretty good. I mean, I would have liked for it to be a one for three, but maybe that was too strong. Um, then it would be pretty close to what we want. But if you buff it with any of your plus threes, so we're playing quite a few ways to buff it. We have Bramble Spark, which is a non-attack that gives plus three if you fuse it. Nimblism, that'll give plus three. And Earth Lore Surges, that all buff. The red one is plus five, and the blue one is plus three. Plus Channel Mount Heroic obviously buffs it. So we have a ton of ways to buff it. And as soon as you buff it and it's coming in for at least five, it's pretty threatening. One for five, go again, on hit draw card is quite strong. So I think this card's worth a slot in the deck. Um, I wish it cost zero, obviously. We don't like that we have to pay for it. It kind of messes with a lot of the pitching math of the deck. But otherwise, it's very strong, and I, I think it's worth the slot in the deck for now. So pretty excited to be playing a new red attack. Um, we were kind of three short. A lot of the times people were playing yellow snatches, um, with the red snatches because you were like a few attacks short, but now we don't have to play any yellow cards I hope we can just play the 20 blues 39 reds and the one Gorganian tome here um, the sideboard is mostly for Dromai and uh, Any of the disruptive decks so we have three command and conquer for any of the decks that care about their arsenal This is good against ninja. This is good against ranger um, It's also a popper into illusionist down and dirty is uh, basically just for illusionist as a popper you could maybe play one 
and to any deck that uses Codex of Frailty if you want to use it to block against those decks. Aether Slash is just for Dromai. Um, it deals one arcane damage to any target if a non-attack was pitched to play it, so you can use it to uh, attack a dragon for four damage and also shoot an Ash Wing. And then Sink Below is against any deck that uses Dominate a lot, so particularly Bravo and Azalea. Then we've got Shock Charmers, which are just for Kano. Spring Tunic, which is good against any long term game, um, a game that's going to go quite a bit longer. So you're thinking Bravo, maybe you're thinking um, Dromai, although I don't know. I mean, I really like the three block on Diadect's Carapace, uh, and I don't know how often we're going to want Tunic anymore. So this might not be necessary. And then Crown of Dichotomy is for that Arcane Barrier one. Um, it'll bring us up to three Arcane Barrier when we need it against any any kind of wizard. And then also it gives us uh, Arcane Barrier 1 against Runeblade if we really want that. Um, but that's the deck overall. That's the game plan. Hopefully that made sense. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below. But I'm going to hop over to the budget versions now. So immediately dropping pretty drastically. Um, so we'll talk about what we cut here, basically. Uh, all of the legendaries, I think, are gone. So Crown of Providence, this card's um, cheaper now because it got reprinted, but still a bit expensive. Diodis Carabis got cut. Grasp of the Arknight, so all of these expensive legendary equipment. Um, we cut all the expensive Majestics, so Enlightened Strike is gone, Swarming Gloomvale is gone, and uh, Command and Conquer is gone. And then we're also cutting these two legendaries of Fjendal Spring Tunic and Shock Charmers. Um, we do get pretty good replacements for those, so I Aether Ironweave is a very, very strong common chess piece, and I don't think you're losing much at all by playing this. Um, Vexing Quillhand is a little worse than uh, Grasp of the Arknight, but it's stronger sometimes when it gives you two on-demand damage and you really need it. I think it can be stronger sometimes. We get to keep our common equipment of Snapdragon Scalers, which I'm happy to do. And then Crown of D Dominion is quite a bit different because this gives us a gold token. Um, it's our only legendary in the deck now, but it's a bit cheaper. I think it's only about 30 bucks. Um, and it gives us a gold token, which lets us play this new non-attack of Cashin. This gives us one really powerful turn. Um, Cashin usually costs four resources, but if you sacrifice a gold token, it's free, and it's a non-attack that draws two cards and has go again. So when it's free, it's basically like Pot of Greed from Yu-Gi-Oh. Super, super powerful, especially if you can line it up with a Channel Mount Heroic, although I would just play it as soon as you have it um, to use on that gold token. And honestly, it's not too bad if you have to pitch two blues to play it. Um, it basically cycles one of those blues, and you only lose one resource by doing this. Um, you know, you'd usually like to at least get two cards when you use two cards, and you're using two cards plus one resource to play it, so it's not that bad overall. Um, we're playing a few different attacks that are new. We're playing Coaxa Commotion here and Arcanic Crackle. They're not that much worse, honestly. They're not too different from the um, Swarm and Gloomvale and the Enlightened Strike. Um, you know, Coaxa Commotion has been played for a long time in Briar already, and then Arcanic Crackle is not too bad either. But little Briar played this a lot. Um, so I don't think that you're losing too much value playing either of those cards. And otherwise, the main deck is almost identical. Um, and it, it's still quite strong. The sideboard, obviously losing out on Command and Conquer is pretty frustrating. Um, but we're going to play these Talisman of Warfares instead. And uh, for any of the decks that have uh, Codex of Frailty, we're playing Infectious Host. These Entwine Earths are poppers against any Illusionist. And otherwise, it stays basically the same. Um, this deck's still quite strong, like I said. Uh, it's a kind of different version. It's a little more turbo aggro, a little more glass cannon, if you will. You block a lot worse with your equipment, but you get a little faster in your damage with these cash -ins. So it's a little quicker, a little faster, um, but a little easier to kill overall. And then looking at this last version, ultra budget here, only $30 for this deck. Um, you can see the main, uh, the main deck doesn't change too much. Um, I think we lost... Uh, we, we aren't playing the cash inversion anymore because um, we don't want to spend $30 on that legendary headpiece. Um, we're playing the third crown. They're all crowns, I guess. Runeblade's like wearing their crowns. We're just equipping the crown of dichotomy main now. And uh, we're on these bracers of belief, which will often be plus two damage um, if you reveal a red on top. So that's not too bad. Revealing a red just means, you know, it's the same as getting plus two arcane from the uh, vexing um arm piece so not losing too much value there we're playing yellow earth lore sword earth lore surge as well now uh not too bad it's still a pretty good card 
Briar has often played Yellow Earth Lore Surge because this card is so good in the deck, so I don't lose your, think you're losing too much there. Um, we're playing in Twine Lightning um, over some other attack that we cut. Uh, I think maybe over the Mischievous Meeps here, actually, is what I cut for it. Um, and then Tanada Arcanix is a bit of an expensive uh, non-attack, so I think that's what we have these Earth Lore Surges over as well. We've got Entwine Lightning, so a little bit different attack suite. Um, I think we might be playing... Yeah, it, it's just slightly different attacks. The non-attacks don't change too much. We've got a few more Captains Call Blues in here, um, and we're playing slightly different attacks, but... Main deck, once again, stays pretty consistent. It's mostly the equipment we're changing around, so we're losing those um, We're losing those Crown of Dominions here. We're also losing the Vex and Quill Hands, and we're losing Cashin and Sonata as the main changes to the attacks. Um, and then the, the sideboard, uh, we've basically just got the same thing almost. We just switched that Crown of Dichotomy for an Entwine Earth, a third copy. Because we can fit it in now, we have that um, Crown main, but... The game plan does stay the same for all of them. You are trying to play around a huge channel on heroic turn, get it out by pitching an earth blue, play a bunch of your attacks. Um, so, you know, instead of zero for four, this is zero for seven, zero for seven, zero for seven. You know, we're just trying to play a bunch of those. And then we're trying to play two non attacks every turn, play an attack, and then attack with um, Rosetta Thorn here. So, pretty consistent game plan. Um, you know, you're pitching one usually to attack with Rosetta Thorn, so you need to find a way to use your other two resources. Uh, we have all these Earth Lore Surges, so that's nine copies right there of a way to use the two resources. You can spend those two resources on Flex here to give it plus two. Um, and then there's, you know, various other ways to spend a resource here and there, like you can spend one resource on So Tomorrow, um, or you can spend the full three on the Channel Mount Heroic. But that's kind of the key uh, part of the deck. The game plan, like I said, is consistent. You're an aggro deck, um, so you are trying to kill your opponent faster than they can kill you. You're not trying to be slow and set up any crazy combo. The craziest combo is basically cha Channel Mount Heroic, and you just play that as soon as you get it. Um, you do block decently well, because if you have uh, an embodiment of Earth, your non-attacks all block for four. It's never a bad idea to block for four with the Force of Nature um, or block for four with an extra Channel Mount Heroic if you find one. Four block is quite strong, so don't be too afraid to do that. Um, otherwise, that's the deck. I really love this deck. Uh, if you do want the tur the kind of turbo damage version, you can even switch this fully upgraded deck to a Cashin version. You know, switching in this Crown of Dominion and these three copies of Cashin. That's always a, a possibility. You could maybe cut these two Captain's Calls and uh, a Red Earth Lore Surge to fit those non attacks in if you need it, but. Really, really fun deck. Briar is one of my favorite decks to play. I think she's the most fun aggro deck, at least in my opinion she is. Um, and so I really recommend picking her up, especially if you're looking for a budget deck to get into Classic Constructed. I certainly think you can take down an Armory with this $30 version. I even think you can take down an Armory with the $90 version. Um, if you're having trouble taking down an Armory with one of those versions, uh, I, I do think it might just be something where you need to practice a lot more. It does often take a new player a few months before um, they have enough experience to really take down an armory event. So keep at it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Uh, thank you again for all the support. If you want to see these regularly updated decks, so follow me and support me on Patreon. I really uh, appreciate it. And I hope you all have a great night.